A lot of you want to get a job at AWS as a solutions architect. In today's video, I'm going to go over how to select the roles to apply. How does the interview rounds look like along with tips and tricks? How do I know all of this? Well, I have been a cloud solutions architect for over nine years and out of those nine years, last six years, I have been a solutions architect working at AWS. In addition, I have mentored many to get high paying solutions architect jobs, including at AWS. So whatever I'm talking about is from the actual experience and not just some Googled mambo jumbo. Let's get started. Okay, so whenever it comes to solutions architect positions, there are four levels. So this part is important. So please pay close attention. If the title says solutions architect, that means it's L5. If the title says associate solutions architect, it's L4. If the title says senior solutions architect, it's L6. If the title says principal solutions architect, it's L7. Now, most of you will be either L5 or L6 candidate because L4 associate is mostly for freshers or if you have less than five years of IT experience. So this part is a little confusing because if you look at solutions architect, which is L5 and a senior solutions architect, which is L6, the requirements are same. Basic qualification, three plus years of design implementation, basic qualification, three plus years of design, eight plus years, eight plus years, right? So how do you decide? So if you have actually implemented projects on production on AWS, then go for senior solutions architect because you will be asked on real world pros, cons, a little bit of deeper dive. Whereas if you have studied a bunch of AWS, you have done hands-on, then go for L5. When in doubt, go for the lower level. The way Amazon works is once you get in, you do good, you get a huge amount of salary increase. My salary has increased two and a half times after I joined. That's how Amazon works. And the salaries of L5 and L6 are overlapping. So don't think if you join L5, you'll never reach the salary of L6. All the bands are overla overlapping basically. So if a senior solutions architect, which is L6, does an amazing job, his salary will overlap with the principal solutions architect band. Also Amazon titles, are one level lower than traditional company titles. So for example, uh, I was a distinguished cloud architect at Verizon, right? Which is equivalent to principal architect. However, when I joined Amazon, I joined at senior solutions architect, and then I got promoted to principal. Similarly, sometimes folks who are director in external companies will join a senior manager. So don't think too much about the title. If you do a good job, Amazon gives you a lot more money from the second year and the salaries overlap between bands. It's better to go for a little bit lower level and succeed and get in than go for a higher level and fail miserably. And then depending on the interview, you may be blacklisted for six months, one year, etc. Talking about interviews, if you want to get a AWS cloud interview guide with popular interview questions, including technical and behavioral, the system designs and study notes, including this year's reInvents updates, go to www.cloudwithraj.com slash free guide to download this beautiful PDF. All right, back to the video. So now let's say you have chosen either L5 or L6. Now there are four broad categories of solutions architect. Most number of solutions architect jobs are general solutions architect. So if the title says solutions architect, senior solutions architect, or enterprise architect, they're all general SA. General SA is pre-sales. So we will work with the customer, help them design the solution, help them uh, give them a design on migration from data center to AWS, do proof of concept, run immersion days, workshops to help them upskill it but we will not do hands-on keyboard work for the customer. Which brings me to the second type of solutions architect, which is ProServe or Professional Services Solutions Architect. They will either have AWS Professional Services like it's here, or they will have the title as Cloud Infrastructure Architect. General SAs will not have this Cloud Infrastructure Architect because um, 
you know AWS is providing the infrastructure, right? So basically ProServe has to know deeper on how to provision those infrastructure and how to deploy application on those infrastructure. And if you click on the job and you go here, let's say cloud infrastructure architect, healthcare, global health and nonprofit, it should say professional services. Here you go on the right, it says AWS professional services. So if you are a super hands-on guy and uh, you, you are doing infrastructure as code, uh, you know how to troubleshoot, you are a SRE today, then professional services will probably be a better fit. But if today you deal with multiple internal teams, you help system design on those teams, help them on board, this, that, then general SA will be a better fit. The next type is partner solutions architect. In this case, it is a little straightforward, the name, the title will say that, like partner solutions architect. Let's say for example, SAP, right? So SAP is one of our AWS partner and the partner solutions architect will work with SAP to help SAP modernize and cost optimize their internal systems, as well as work with SAP's end customer, right? And help them onboard into AWS. The last kind, which has the fewer opening or the fewest opening, is the specialist solution architect. So in this case, so this is actually in my team, um, senior GTM specialist solutions architect, and then the name of the technology. Um, so GTM is go to market, so this part is new. Uh, so go to market means not only you will help customer design on containers and do the stuff that solutions architect do, also you understand how, what it takes to create a market motion. So maybe uh, someone is running Kubernetes on EC2 or regular on-prem. So you can come up with a methodology to migrate them from on-prem Kubernetes to Elastic Kubernetes service. So a little bit on the market side, a little bit on the business side. Now, only apply to these roles if you are super deep in it, right? Because see it says this is for containers and it says this, this position will help our largest customer adopt EKS, ECS, Fargate and other AWS container offerings. So let's say for example, when I joined AWS, I joined as a general as a enterprise architect, okay? And then I, I got deep in Kubernetes and serverless, then I became a specialist solutions architect. All right, so now that we understand different levels of SAs and different job family, let's talk a little bit about the interview process. So the first round is online assessment round. This is a new round because of the number of people that are applying these days. This is a, a non-proctored assessment. No one is going to check when you are doing this. So this is both technical and behavioral. In technical, you have to select from different areas like analytics, infrastructure, compute, etc., etc. You have a lot of choices. I think you have to select two or three and then you will be given a series of multiple choice questions. If you are someone who actually studied AWS or have a certification, you should be able to pass that. Now the behavioral is a little bit trickier. This is still multiple choice questions. They're gonna ask you, hey, if you, in this situation, what will you do? So you have to just select. If you have studied the Amazon leadership principles, you should be good here. I'm giving you a secret tip. If you do better in the technical round, in this case, you should be moved to the next round. Unless there is a huge red flag on the behavioral round that basically you clearly going against all the Amazon leadership principles. So for example, customer obsession. If you repeatedly say that constantly prioritize yourself before your customers in more than one questions, those are red flags, right? But generally speaking, if you do great in the technical and then behavioral, if you apply common sense, you should be good. If you pass this online assessment, then it will be telephonic interview. And this is general for all AWS uh, interviews. Uh, unlike other companies, AWS interviews are done, done by one primary person. Most of the time, it will be just one person. And sometimes there will be another person shadowing the interview and Rare cases, the shadow will jump in and ask question, and most of the time it will be just be one person. The telephonic interview will be mostly be technical, perhaps one or two leadership principle questions. Now, the telephonic interview, the technical part will be like a rapid fire question. In some cases, they might ask you to do system design, 
but generally system design is, is reserved for the actual loop but they are going to test your knowledge in different AWS areas like compute, network, security, storage, or based on what you have in the job description. So let's say if you are going for specialist SA for containers, which I am, almost all the questions will be related to containers, right? Once you pass the telephonic interview round, then you will be passed to the infamous loop round, okay? So here you will have five to seven different loop rounds depending on the team and your level. And this and these loop rounds are a mix of technical and behavioral. For the behavioral round, you have to give actual example from your projects. So let's say one common example is tell me a time where you have went above and beyond for a customer. So you have to actually give an example from your projects. You cannot say, oh, I will do this, I will do that. Then the interviewer will say, no, 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 no. Tell me an actual example you have done. Another major misconception is all these answers need to be on AWS, which is not true. You can give examples of your on-prem projects. And we expect the answers in the star format, which is situation, task, action, results. Actually, us interviewers take our notes in that format as well. The recruiter should tell you that, hey, you should give answer in the star format. So. Look, I understand every format has some flaws, but you know the rule of the game, right? So if recruiter told you to do in the star format, in the online research, you found out we expect the answers in the star format. So please give the answers in the star format to increase your chances. Uh, if you want to know an actual, actual example with a bad answer and a good answer, check out my other videos. Uh, I'll, I'll give a link up top. And also another tip is don't just say we, we, we. We want to know what have you done. So think of it like a selection process in sports. You are gonna play in a team sports like soccer or American football, but when you go for selection committee, you are judged based on how you bowl, how fast you run. So think, think like the same way. So those are the behavioral round. You might also have, especially if you are L6, you might also have a dedicated system design round where we might say, hey, design this YouTube, design this, design that. So watch my system design uh, videos of the course that should give you an idea how to think about different system designs, right? My whole channel is based on that. Now, recently, you could also have a presentation round. Previously, when I joined, I, I had a presentation round with all the interviewers and it was one hour presentation round. The current presentation round is with one person and it will not be the whole round. It would be like maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes presentation, rest of the time, leadership questions or uh, technical questions. Uh, and the recruiter will give you what we are looking for in the presentation round, like the business objective, da 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 da, all that stuff. So don't worry too much about it. If you have actually done a project, it will be easy for you. And this project, does not need to be on the cloud. You could show a project that you have done even on-prem or even another cloud. We are testing you on your, how you communicate, how you present, and how you handle objections, right? So those are the objectives, okay? And if you pass the loop round, that's it. Congratulations, you are in. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Hopefully this helps you on your job search, and hopefully I see all of you inside AWS. All right, folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.